when you look at your own life, you want to have a life that is also centered around something. Sometimes people center their life around their family, they center their life around their work, but sometimes people get caught into the edges. Sometimes the corners can be, oh, overeating, smoking, drinking, things that distract us from the center, and so we lose our focus. I'm a casualty of the Vietnam War in another way. I was drafted in August of 1972, but I got out in a way that I viewed as expedient, but fairly shameful in retrospect. I like to work on the floor. I don't know why, but it just is very comfortable for me. I eventually wound up in London, England, living a life uh, as a semi-homeless person. I discovered that the museums of England are free, and I um, was drawn to certain paintings that evoke something in me emotionally. I tried to draw a chair in my room, and I could draw it pretty well. And that set me off on drawing and I drew for, oh, 11 years and never did anything else but drawing. Eventually in 1977, I came back to America and I became the picture framer and eventually got to know art restorers and I got into the world of art and the world of art is very forgiving as far as individual personalities, what you're like, what you're doing, what you've done. Just in the areas that I need to go. There was an emptiness that couldn't be filled and I tried to fill it with drugs and alcohol. I had driven up to see my sister and she wasn't home. And as I was returning, I was driving along and realized as I looked at the landscape, that it appeared to be not familiar to me. It was like I was lost. If you can ever imagine being buried alive, and you're in that coffin, and all of a sudden you wake up, and you are so encased by something that you cannot escape from. Your initial response, I'm sure, would be one of ultimate and utmost panic. And in the midst of that despair, I said, Oh God, help me. Help me. I sat and waited. I was absolutely shaking, just quivering uncontrollably. And in a few minutes, that actually died down and I was alive. I began a dialogue with God that I have today. And it was a question, Lord, what do you want me to do now? And that day, after that day, I never had another drink and I never had another drug again in my life. After I'd been sober for four and a half years, I met my wife, Judy, and we got married, and we have a daughter, Christina. We decided that we were going to start to go to church. The very first day I ever went to that church, I was sitting in the congregation with all the people there, and the pastor in front of everybody said something to me that was the most remarkable thing, another sign for me. It was Blakey, we want to welcome you here, and we've been waiting for you. Well, you know, it had been many years since the time in that car, but something happened to me in that car with the Lord, and I took it as a sign, I took it as a sign, a sign of the Lord speaking to me again. And my prayer stayed the same. 
What, do you, what is it you want me to do now? Well, the Lord likes the lost one. The Lord uses the lost one. The Lord takes the lost one and, and shapes him or her into what it is that he would have him do. Fear in the world means I'm scared to death. Fear of the Lord does not mean that. It's a different type of fear. And then, and then if you fear the Lord, then, there's a, then there are blessings that come. And so there is great blessing in my life. So I have a very rich life, and it's all about love. It's all about love.